Lake Sky Mind, The Diary of a Progressive Rock Musician, chapters 5 and 6. Really great to enter the music shop. Dozens of guitars hung on the walls, organs, drum sets, rows of shelves stocked with scores and method books. I saw a hollow body I really liked. Over there was a Telecaster. Brazenly inviting was an acoustic 12-string I longed to get my hands on. I picked up an Epiphone F-hole hollow body that was cheaper. You can plug in here to this amplifier, an assistant informed me. Got a nice reverb sound out of the amp. The velvet action of the guitar made it so easy to play. I plucked out some chords, note after note, all balanced and tuned, shimmering through the speaker. I bent a note, wonderful, even played one of our tunes and hummed along. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't even afford this now, so I played the 12 string. It was slightly cheaper but I really needed this type of guitar for a band. Man, it sounded good. Stern, harpsichord-like notes, broad sweeping chord progression, projection of sound, just uh, infinite. Ah, this would be perfect for the new slow part of the song I was writing. The assistant looked on patiently, knowing the desire to purchase was born. He walked away to show a customer some keyboard instrument. As I was playing, Enjoying the beautiful tones, I heard the stuttering bursts of an orchestra, as if some record player needle was skipping all over a classical music LP or radio interference on a BBC concert. I looked over and saw a customer playing notes on this keyboard instrument. What seemed to be a full um, orchestra coming out of that keyboard instrument is actually what I heard and I was astonished the assistant explained that it was like a tape playing machine with the wheels of tapes of recorded notes of violins flutes a chorus cellos trumpets etc it was called orchestrator and had been around for a decade in the US and had recently been sold to a British firm to manufacture and promote in Europe each time the customer pressed a key a somewhat surreal yet realistic tone sound would um, um, issue it was just a big wall of, of bizarre sound and the chords lifted this wondrous cloud of music in the air the thing was so fascinating i put down the guitar and sat for half an hour as the assistant demonstrated this marvel of new musical technology oh wow this would be the grooviest addition to our band cost was prohibitive though very much so i wondered if you could rent these the salesman said they'd be getting a few more of these keyboards next month and would hire out at least one of them for, for promotion. It'd be steep, but I think we could do it for some special gigs. I urged John to come over and try the orchestrator, get the feel of it, so he could do some of the organ parts of our songs with it and practice some arrangement ideas. So he did, and after one session, he learned the rough frameworks of some of our songs and how to implement this new instrument. Should we hire it for a live performance? That was a big question. The following weeks were spent gigging at Dryden Lane Pub and a few clubs in nearby towns. We even went over to Cornwall for a four-day engagement at a posh dinner club, where most didn't care how good we were as long as we just provided a solid beat for them to dance to on every other tune. I remember that place and us wearing these ridiculous silver gray suits. We even had to pomade grease down our hair behind our ears. We got to debut my new song. It was powerful. So powerful that the opening organ melody that came in after it and that played with this minor chord arpeggio was just really spectacular. The crowd seemed to quiet down and time burst, then relaxed its tempo and we were in another world and we'd taken the audience along for a ride. It seemed like the revelers were actually paying attention to us. As the drums rolled in during the chorus, the pulse increased, adrenaline rushed as fast as the band because everyone was playing faster than we'd rehearsed it, and it felt like flying. I think I missed a few notes, added a few rhythmically in the next chords just to make up for it. We finally got good applause after that one. Then we took a break. I sauntered over to the bar to get myself a drink with John as a few patrons patted us on the back and complimented us on a nice set. A bubbly blonde was there, voluptuous and loud. Under a rain of praise, I softened. My natural inclination would have been to avoid this type of bird, but she was just an incredible force. John had been pulled into a group of admirers, and I couldn't so easily reach for that lifeline conversationally, so I just remained glued to this chick who grabbed me. It was nice 
It, it was uh, nice, but it was tough to avert her big blue eyes, and those breasts did look inviting. Nevertheless, she wasn't my type at all. I tried to be polite. I wasn't necessarily an assertive guy. My strength lay in introspection. The social fencing thing had always been alien to me, and I couldn't imagine what it would have been like if I hadn't had a band and a form of artistic expression to frame my life. Before I knew what was happening, she was nuzzling up against me, the fragrance of dark porter and perfume enveloping the moment. Then she started pinching my waist. That abrupt physical stimulation had me at odds with logical thinking. I quaffed another gulp of porter and she, that she was holding to my lips. I was getting woozy now and I actually thought I might grab her ass or caress her arm, maybe kiss her. <clears throat> Miraculously, the owner of the pub intervened and introduced me to a record company scout while the floozy took a break for the loo. We'd like to set you up for a recording audition, the scout from Chelsea Records announced. With our engineers and some extra musicians, we think we can get a hit single out of you. John had been waved over to talk with us. We got more details on the recording sessions. No mention of money or a definite contract. Apparently, they had a new studio and wanted to experiment state-of-the-art equipment for 1966. Our keyboardist inquired about the session musicians they'd provide, and if they had an orchestrator. Oh, we can rent one of those if you like. Don't have one yet, but it was recommended by our producer. And session musicians. Oh, we have some of the best guitarists and backup singers. We can even throw in a few cellists, violinists, and trumpeters explained the record company scout. John retained his uh, usual, uh, very aloof, objective stance. I, however, was all starry-eyed and envisioned our big break followed by worldwide tours. The big-breasted blonde had moved on to another bloke in a tuxedo, thankfully, and Mike, Thomas, John, and I went to the back office of the pub to discuss the recording session with the record company scout. It'd be just one day of working on a few songs, getting some good tracks down. They'd bring in the session musicians later. Chelsea Records was in London, of course, so we'd have to get a hotel, which they would pay for. Seemed like a good deal. No pay, but an opportunity. What did we have to lose? We all agreed we should record my new song, plus one of John's sort of zippy, bouncing tunes, a straight rock and roller. So, an accessible song people could dance to, and my more esoteric one. Back at home, I observed my dad, a 55-year-old conservative man. He was eating his dinner slowly, just picking little bits of the mashed potatoes and liver. Usually at the end of the day, he'd have a big appetite, but not today. Something was on his mind. He did public relations for a Christian charity and worked with zeal to promote various programs for orphanages, senior citizen homes, and educational programs for the disadvantaged. He told my mother he was becoming disillusioned as a president of the charity was rumored to be siphoning off large amounts of donated money for his own benefit. No one had proof, of course, but his frequent vacations, the well-dressed, beautiful young tarts with whom he'd been increasingly spotted, new cars, clothes, etc., would have indicated that he was living far beyond his means. He had a charismatic personality and everyone liked him. He often would quote the Bible at board meetings and was always enthusiastic to chat with all staff members. My parents were conservative and simple. And um, it, at least in their approach to life, they didn't need so many experiences and ambitions and adventures. They attended church a few times a month, yet did not preach any commandments to others. Lacking for nothing, they base their happiness on a firm belief in a beneficent prime mover and a profound love for each other. Mom and Dad were soulmates, I guess. Not like they were jumping around in a romantic rapture daily. But what was essential was a calm and enduring empathy between them. Perhaps they knew that it couldn't get any better. As such, it was a pretty household. A pretty, wonderfully happy household. In general. They'd no idea of the coming sexual revolution. Um, how could I believe in God if the director of this charity maybe was a criminal, a scoundrel? Later that night, I did some meditation. As I had learned about this mantra thing, Om, I felt myself detached from my body and problems. Life was a thing outside, 
and I resonated with the eternal humming sound of the universe.